All right, welcome to Your Time, Your Money. I'm uh, Matthew Tarullo, uh, and we're with Justin Philippone, an amazing guest today. We have the sensei of divorce with us today. Uh, Kelly's going to lead some information in for our viewers. Um, obviously, we're very excited to have you, and uh, we're super pumped that um, that we're going to have some shining, some be able to shine some light uh, on this situation where, you know, in the United States, we're the sixth highest country in the world for divorce rates. Now, you can tell me if that's right or wrong because you're the divorce liaison. <laughs> I just looked them up on Wikipedia quick. <laughs> but uh, uh, we're very excited to kick off this episode. Uh, it's your time. Your money. All right. So, Kelly, give us a little background on you and who you are and why you do what you do. All right. Well, thank you, guys. I appreciate both of you for having me on today. I'm Kelly Currow. I work at the law firm of Ionello Anderson been an attorney as of this year for 31 years. Oh my goodness. And um, you're like a day over 40, I, Kelly. You've I, been practicing since you were 10. Thank you. But <laughs> my my main concentration area is matrimonial and family law. Gotcha. Um, and if somebody had told me when I was in law school in the early 90s that that's what I would be doing, I would say, no way. I didn't even take that class in law school. Um, She's the sensei, but did not take the class. Yeah, she did not yeah, need the class. I did not take the class. <laughs> but, you know, that's what I ended up gravitating to, gotcha. to in my practice area. And, um, Believe it or not, when I started out, I was in a firm that did a little bit of everything. Okay. But that's what a divorce is. If right. you it's think a little bit of everything. It's a little bit of everything. <laughs> if you think about it, folks have their house, right? Yeah, right. So you need to know. A little bit about real estate. real estate. Okay. Folks have retirement accounts. So you okay. need to understand retirements. Folks have investment accounts, right? Uh -huh. You need to understand that. Folks have tax issues. So you need to understand at least basic things so you can refer them off to a competent account and, and sure. understand that those are issues. So family law, although people think of it as just the divorce itself, it encompasses so many other things. And that's kind of the mesh of talking with you guys, the world right. that you're in, because the big thing <clears throat> in a divorce is money. You right. Know? How and much is this going to cost? How, much how is many this emails? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I know that just just from talking to clients about divorce, it's very shrouded, right? There's a lot of gray area. There's a lot of there's a lot of concern and a lot of stress. So today, our goal is to shine some light on things, on like do's and don'ts, right? We're going to shine some light on some things people should do and potentially shouldn't do in a divorce situation. Um, but one thing that when I talked to Kelly, we were talking before we started, it, we talked about customization. Right. We talked about having a great entrepreneur and a great practitioner that can customize a plan. Right. Yeah. And, and I want you to just delve into that customization piece, Kelly, because every divorce is different. different right. It, it is. It is so different. Um, I get calls sometimes where people say, like, I looked up the forms online. They're on oh. what we call oh, the New York State Office of Court Administration <laughs> website. And it gives you. 40 some pages of instructions on how to do your own divorce. Ugh. Not necessarily a good idea if you have any complicating factors because the law may remain the same from okay. case to case, but everybody's factual cer circumstances are, different. are so unique. Gotcha. Depending how many kids you have, what age your kids have oh. makes a difference, right? If there's any special needs in a the family. And any special needs in the family. Um, you know, it, a divorce for parents who have toddlers, under school age kids, okay. we might be focusing on how to develop a parenting plan to kind of meet childcare needs, mm -hmm. where if I have older kids, we might be, how do, or how are we funding not only this divorce, right? transportation, and then college that's college, coming, yeah. coming up in a couple of years. So People have different values and different goals depending upon the facts of when in their marriage they're getting divorced yeah. and what they have. So it's almost kind of like a lens that you're looking at it through being someone that's seen a lot of situations. You kind of know which pathway to take for each particular situation. What, right. I, what I tell people is you may not know immediately what the path is because what I like to do is I call it generating options, right? Gotcha. So I like to find out from my clients 
what are the things that are your priorities, like your goals? Is your mm-hmm. goal to keep the house? Mm-hmm. Is your goal to have a shared parenting plan? Is your goal, if you're an older couple getting divorced, to preserve your retirement nest egg? Trying to understand their goals helps me understand what options we can generate. Now, obviously, options I generate, I also have to have multiple because it's a negotiation with the other side. Yeah. So you have to be able to take clients through if this happens, then maybe we can do this. If this happens, maybe we can do that. And be willing to really take the time to do that customization. Because yeah. without that, it would be cookie cutter. And that's right. not going to really meet the needs of that particular family. I, I think that's kind of exactly where the uh, the similarities between what you do and what we do overlap. There's no cookie extremely. cutter method, right? Exactly. Yeah. There's no cookie cutter approach to anything that we do in the in the financial services uh, side of things. Just as you were saying before, every single individual situation is so much different so that you need to have a, a good, competent um, divorce attorney to be able to, to understand your individual needs and then be able to create a plan specifically for you. Yeah, if somebody comes into you with investment, you need to know old, how old they what are. What are your goals? What are what, their what's goals? Your risk uh, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> is your risk tolerance in your twenties different than in your forties or fifties? So, so like yeah. those are all things. When I'm doing an intake for a divorce with clients, that I'm looking at as far as these are issues. What? Where is the client feeling their right. priorities are? Because. The average is, is about 90% of divorce cases settle. They may start out in court, but right. most cases do That's settle. That, so if someone is in the process uh, of thinking uh, uh, about uh, a divorce, most likely you're going to explain to them settling is the best way to solve this. The only reason I say that to people is I say, well, you can let the judge to des- decide, right? Ooh. But judges don't really know you. They're <clears> going to see a very small snapshot of you sure. from a particular time and they don't know your family. Right. And if you really want to make the best decisions for your family, then making them, even if it's somebody you don't get along with well, making them somewhat together and right. being on the same page is going to get you a better quality settlement. Because in my experience, the people who let the judge decide, they have never worked out any way to resolve conflict other than in court. So they end up in court after they're even divorced yeah, because they right. know no other way to but, resolve and nobody conflict. and nobody wins in that situation because it just ends up costing more money mm-hmm. costing more time so i'm gonna let you guys pick and guess here i'm gonna do a little guessing game <laughs> so justin what state has the highest rate of divorce what oh man that's mm. the higher, highest rate and i'll give you you want a hint i'll give you i'll give you one lifeline uh east coast or west coast um it's on the west coast it's it's on the western side of the united states nevada Nevada is correct. Right. The Sin City is correct. <laughs> and I'll let I'll let uh, Kelly guess what's the lowest per capita. This is on the East Coast. Lowest per capita. Vermont? Close. Massachusetts. It's oh, on, really? Yeah, Ma- so Massachusetts had the lowest as as of 2021. And again, these stats might be messed up, but yeah. I, I but it makes sense though because they have a smaller number of people yeah. and probably less turnover, less opportunity yeah. for divorce. Um but but really, you know, here's my, my most important thing today was if you're a person that's watching this that's either A in the middle of a divorce or B thinking about a divorce or C just finished a divorce, you know, there there's information out there and mm-hmm. there's support out there for you. Either it be with a great attorney that can shine light on some do's and don'ts. So can you just take me through a list of maybe three don'ts? I was just about to ask that. Right? Yeah. Don't this is what you're don't do this. If you're gonna get divorced, don't do this, right? Okay. What's a what's my number one don't? Okay, so the first don't is don't do it without talking to the lawyer first. Got to talk to the lawyer. Okay. Because <laughs> if you're thinking about a divorce and you just go and announce it to your spouse Ugh. and you haven't and you don't know what the consequences of the of the divorce might be, <laughs> like really, be like, like like so it, it, so so how do you backtrack from that and take right. that back when you, you go when you go to you the lawyer and the find toothpaste. out? You know, you know, you know. I've had clients say, "Oh, 
So it's actually cheaper to keep her, right? You know, like some some of those kind of phrases. And you and you think, well, then have the conversation with the lawyer first before you let the cat out of the bag and and really understand what your options are because sometimes people's expectations of what a divorce can get them are yeah. totally unrealistic because again, like we were talking about earlier, the internet is right. always so don't, correct. Don't so announce don't. <laughs> divorce until you've actually spoken to Kelly. Yeah. Got it. All right. Don't, All right. Don't number one. All right. So that so that so that's a big don't. Don't try to do it yourself with forms off of the internet. Okay. I have. So I hope our viewers are getting a little bit of a trend here. Yes, there's great information on the internet about financial stuff and divorce, but yeah. probably should go to someone that's good at it or does it every day. Yes. Okay, sorry. So, and then the third thing is try to keep the status quo. If you're gonna do things oh, like so start- this is a do. Yeah, this is okay, a, th so th well, do. this so is- So don't, don't do. Well, this is also a don't. So don't start taking money out of your accounts oh, okay. and moving money around that's going to tip your spouse, like what's right. going on. So, so the first don't is, is don't do it on your own. Don't go on the right. internet. I, don't change monetary situations, situations. <laughs> right? Don't yeah. change the money. Until you've talked to somebody. Yeah. 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 I, okay. I mean, you have to. And I see people do just silly things. And I'm like, why did you do that? Right. And what ends up happening is they've done it. It really doesn't have any legal consequence because they gotcha. don't understand the significance of marital assets. Right. It's a marital asset. So it doesn't matter so, that you put it in a different account. It's still a marital let's, asset. Let's yeah. run through a real world, right? Let's yeah. say, okay, I get home. All right. I get home from work. My wife says, hey, I want a divorce. You got to leave. Get out of the house. I don't want you here. Right. As a, in a situation where a lot of a lot of guys have probably had that happen. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be with you. By the way, 69 percent of women, according to the survey, start the divorce. 69 percent say, yeah, I want a divorce. Right. I think the stats are higher that for, women for are women, the, they initiator, engage the, divorce, the right? initiator. So yeah. so I'm I'm a, I'm a guy. I go home. End of the day. Long day. My wife says, hey, I want a divorce. Get out. You're no longer wanted here. What do I do? Do I leave? You do not leave. Ah, this is a shining the light. The beacon, yeah, right? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the beacons have been lit. Don't leave. You don't leave Tell until, me why. until you talk to a lawyer, right? Gotcha. So, A, I know you have kids, right? I have kids in this, age. In so, this situation. It's so, me. We're gonna, so, I'll be the so, victim so, here. So, right? so, so, uh, so <laughs> if you're talking to a lawyer and you have kids, the reason they're, it, it's not because people will come in and say, oh, I didn't leave because of abandonment. Like right. somebody told me that was abandonment. We have no fault grounds for divorce in New York state. We, sure. we don't use fault grounds. What I'm really concerned about is if you leave and okay. you have kids together, okay. you've now kind of made your your wife the primary custodian. Right, because I left, de facto. I left the house. So, so what are your rights to see your kids? Right. What What if she says, "Oh, well, wait till you get a court order to see your kids." Okay. Right. And so that's always a big concern. And then my second concern is you're a family unit sharing money now. Who's paying the bills? Right. Like, so I always tell people, if you want to facilitate something like that, <laughs> do it in a way where you're talking to someone and even pre-starting a divorce. How can we just sit down, separate out the day-to-day -day finances, separate yeah. out what we're going to do with the kids before somebody well, just leaves, unless it's a domestic violence situation. Uh, that, that's or there's some, there's, or there's there's a, a, there, there are obviously always right. going to be some caveat. Remember, as, as you're watching this, our viewers are watching this, the sequence is, I came home, my wife said, I want a divorce, get out. Obviously, no violence, nothing's yeah, happening. Yeah. She's just like, hey, you don't, you're not wanted here anymore, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. The other thing I want to talk about is, is, again, shining light on it. it you, you mentioned the, the household finances. Um, you know, if, if there's someone that is a primary income earner and then someone that is not, what does that look like for a divorcee? Because I'm guessing a lot of people out there, right? There's a primary income earner and there might be a secondary income earner and it might be the woman as the primary income earner. Yeah. So what does it look like when someone gets divorced and, and a primary income earner and, and then the non-primary or non-income earner in the household end up having to, to split ways? What happens in that situation? For so, our viewers that have that situation maybe going on. So a lot of times it depends, Matt, what the imbalance of the earnings are. Okay. So the bigger the imbalance, the bigger um, issues that you might encounter. Gotcha. So mm -hmm. if it's an income issue, like, you know, 
one spouse makes significantly less than the other. If I'm seeing that on my intake sheet that I do when I meet people for the first time for a consultation, yeah. I'm thinking in the back of my mind, I need to make sure this person knows about spousal maintenance in New York State and what the calculations are. There's actually a statutory standard and how that gets triggered. Okay. Um, we may be looking at it as far as assets because sometimes there's an imbalance of the assets. Yeah. Maybe somebody had a significant assets coming into the marriage. So maybe I'm telling somebody that part you're not getting because maybe that's gonna that, that might be separate property. Okay. So there could be a lot of different scenarios um, with an imbalance of finances. You got, yeah. I was just say, so so when does somebody know to Right. Know, when, when's that trigger? Me. When's that yes. trigger point moment? What 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 kind of goes off and what what should go off in somebody's brain to see to think think I mean, you know I've been thinking about this for a while now now is when I need to engage a service like yours. What I tell people is you don't really need to engage me. You you just need to do a consult, right? right. To do a get consult. to get information. Okay. So when people come in and do a consultation with me, they're not. On, I'm not saying okay, you got to file for divorce next week. Or sometimes that might not be their best option, right? Sure. Yeah. So what they're doing is it's information gathering to educate themselves about what is going to be significant in their situation. Sure. Gotcha. I okay. mean, I have another question with uh, the whole, the, the the feeling of helplessness, right? Because I've heard this a lot from people. And obviously, I have, I've had friends who got divorced. Mm -hmm. They get to that point where they're like, I just don't care anymore. I, I don't care what happens. I'm just going to, I'm going to let my significant other or ex just run me over. I just want to be done with the situation. And they're going to check out? They're going to check out. So what happens? And that probably happens a lot. You can probably I, can, see that. Can I tell you what happens? Sure. Is they have buyer they have buyer's, buyer's remorse, remorse later after they sign the agreement yep. and then they come to a lawyer and say, I gave up this, this, and this, or I didn't pursue this, and they want to see if there's anything I can do post divorce get to get, right. it back. Can I get it back. And 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 depending what it is, maybe, maybe not. And and so I, I tell people I get that. Like those are real feelings. And one of the things I counsel my clients is I tell them, look, divorce is probably going to be one of the most stressful times in your life. It's like hitting the reset that, button. That there's going to yeah, be a like lot of anxiety. Button. There's going to be a lot of just worry. Yeah. Like, you know, and don't make decisions until you have all of the information. Because the people who come in and say to me, I'm going to waive child support or I'm going to do this. They're doing it because, like you said, they just want to. just want to be uh, done. I want, or, I want to move on. Or right? I'm going to pay whatever he or she asks, right? Mm -hmm. And then they say that's absolutely what they want to move on. And then they don't think of the long-term consequences. Mm. So here's what I tell people. I have a speech for this. Here we go. Here, my speech is, um, is I always say to people, my job is attorney and counselor at law. Okay. So my job is to counsel you as to why I think you shouldn't do this and you should hit pause and consider this before you just do X, Y, Z. Okay. Mm -hmm. But after you've hit pause, if you still want to do it, you're an adult. I right. can't stop you from doing yeah, it. I, you know, but I'm going to make sure that in the agreement, it's clear that I've told you that right. these this was going to happen. This right. was going to happen because... People in those types of situations, you're clouded with the emotion. Yeah. And how they remember things went down can be a lot different. Than when how they actually when, did, right? When, when yeah. they actually did when you're in a heightened emotional state, which is why in New York State, to do a divorce settlement, it has to be in writing. And it has to be in writing, acknowledged in front of a notary public. So mm -hmm. you can't like reach the divorce settlement with your spouse on the back of the napkin or on the legal right. pad and sign it and say, I'm done. So there's a reason for that. Because when it's words on paper, people, we hope, are reading it. Like yeah. when I do an agreement, I have them initial each page. <clears throat> mm -hmm. right. I want you to read this. That I you want, actually read it. I want you to it. make sure you understand it because... People will, in the stress of the moment, make decisions 
that they're going to regret so potentially. Just give me a little bit of insight on like, you know, let's say I'm in the middle of a divorce and uh, my, my ex, my would be ex spouse is texting me. Um, you know, how do I handle that process of communication? If a divorce is happening, right? What, what's my primary mode of communication? Is everything verbal? Is everything email? Is everything, what's my best way to make sure I protect myself and the situation? Actually, depending what you need to communicate about, if it's parenting things, if it's kids things, yep. one of the things I recommend to clients all the time okay. are apps. There are apps that- like uh, A tracking app. Uh, no, right? no, 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 talk, no. Talking parent. Um, well, but it tracks all uh, the information. It tracks all yeah, the, yeah. Correct. So instead yeah. of- Oh, did I email her about that? Right, now did I, go did, find did it I call and, okay. it? Right. Did, did, was that in a text? Do I do I still have that phone? Hmm. Did I change phones? And, oh, yeah. Just use I, an app. So oh. so uh, there most of the good third party apps that are out there for co parenting allow you to not only communicate hmm. in what appears to be almost like texting each other. Sure. But you're doing it through but it's the audited. app. But it's audited. But yeah. it's not really audited. It, you can go get it. You can go That's get what's it. Important. That's yeah. the key. Yeah. There's a record of it. Store it and somewhere. it's a good yeah. way for parents, like if they're sharing monetary expenses for the kids, you can tracking monetary. You, yeah. you can take a photo with your phone, right, mm -hmm. of the I receipt, this, I that. And, that, and then it goes into the app. So nobody can <laughs> later say, "Oh, you didn't give me that receipt," or you did. And most people, let's face it don't want to deal with paper anymore. They want to deal electronic, right? yeah, yeah. They want to deal with electronic. Um, it allows you to do things like a shared parenting calendar. What day is Johnny going to the dentist? Everybody knows. So, right? so I got two stat lines I want to know, Kelly, because Kelly has been giving us great information. What's the timeline on how long a divorce takes, relatively speaking? And what's a cost? What's a cost normally? What's the actual like, how much does it cost me to get divorced? Like, not real cost, not your cost, but the cost in general. Oh, so you get what I'm saying. Yeah, timeline depends upon how amicable, amicable people yeah. are. Yeah. So it, I'll what do you normally so see? so so the timeline I give people is if it's litigated in court because okay. so and I will tell you in the capital district we're pretty lucky because. In New York City, those timelines are completely different. But upstate, <laughs> the timelines are a little bit better. So okay. in a contested divorce, once a judge is assigned, they put you on a scheduling order. And typically, they're looking to see cases resolved after the judge has been assigned in six to nine months. That's okay. not six to nine months from starting the process. Right. But when you after you first met with the judge for what we call a preliminary conference. Sure. You can certainly do it faster than that if parties are agreeable and they're maybe using something out of court like mediation, sure. collaborative divorce. There are a but lot six of- six to nine months is pretty, uh, pretty standard. Pretty standard if it's litigated after you first started seeing a judge. Unless there's complexities to a case. Yeah, there's but always, yeah, there's always some, wrinkles. Sometimes there's cases where you need to value a business. You need to do something that's going to take time of other experts so it takes more time. Um, money, it's not just the legal fees mm. you pay your lawyer. Certain things trigger the fact of whether or not you may have to contribute to your spouse's attorney's Ooh. fees. So the domestic relations law in New York State has a statutory presumption that what we call the more moneyed spouse may have to contribute to the other spouse's attorney's fees. Yeah, right. And so that's a consideration. It's not perhaps just what you pay your lawyer. You may actually be paying for both lawyers, right? Mm. Um, and then what are you dividing up and how long will you need to get that back? So right. one of the trends, I don't know in all of your research, if you saw it, <laughs> one of the trends now is, 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 is how many <laughs> people 50 plus are getting divorced, what we call gray divorces, gotcha. this older generation getting divorced. So they should be talking to you two, right? Retirement planning. Right. Yeah. I, have and, the, I have this whole 401k. And, 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 now, and now we're talking about dividing that stuff up. So if you've planned, just think about it in your day to day. Mm -hmm. If you've done a financial plan for a couple of, of yours, right? Ugh. And now all of a sudden they're in their mid fifties and they're getting divorced. There's no fast way to necessarily make up that loss. So those no. are like the real world, like dollar costs. So what does that translate to? They're coming back to you guys. 
rerun re when I can retire, right? Yeah. Because Let's it's not going <laughs> to it's, it's not going to be 65 now, right? right? right. Yeah. You know, it, it's those types of real world monetary costs. And the other big one right now is housing. Housing is crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. Everybody knows that. So if you have a marital home and you're going to sell it, right. The market's great. You're going to get a good price. Maybe you're going to walk away with cash. Try to buy a new house. You're also going to now buy at the yeah, top of the market with mortgage yeah. interest rates that are going to be, you know, probably double what you had on your on your other home. So there are a lot of money considerations, right, yeah. that come into this that are beyond just what you pay the lawyer. I mean, I, Kelly, you, you've shined light on a lot of interesting things that I think when people start going down this road of divorce, separation, uh, whatever it is, annulment, right? People start going down this road, they don't realize how complex and how deep this well gets, yep. right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that being said, one of the primary reasons that I wanted Kelly to come on is that she is a very, she's a proprietor and understands there's obviously situations out there where there's special needs. Mm -hmm. And and we did talk about this one, on one of our last shows for trust planning, for children with special needs. Um, you know, and, and just shine briefly, just a little bit of light on how complex it gets when you're divorced or going to get divorced and you have a child or multiple children with special needs. The big thing with having children for special needs is how are you planning post what would normally be the cutoff age, right? Mm. So in New York State, a, a child in general is an adult at 18, can make their own decisions. So they age out of custody. For child support, it's 21. Okay. But if you have a special needs child and they turn 18, depending upon what where they lie, uh, again, yeah. what their classification mm -hmm. is, what their needs, what their supports are needed, do parents who are getting divorced maybe need to consider co-guardianship for a oh. special needs child who isn't ever going to be capacitated enough to make their own decisions, oh, gotcha. whether they're financial or whether they're just family situations. Mm -hmm. um, entitlements to government benefits. When that child turns 18, mm -hmm. if they are disabled enough to be eligible for perhaps SSI, Supplemental uh, Security Income, or SSDI, Inco potentially, or SSDI yeah. potentially, you know, if you are arranging or crafting a divorce settlement that then gives a parent child support, that child support might be counted against them. Oh. For, you know, so there are a lot there are, there are different layers of complexity gotcha. that are engaged in that, mm -hmm. and people need to consider that you know just like if they had stayed together as a married couple. Again, depending upon the needs the of the child, yeah. they may need to do some more planning than just the divorce. So, um, you know, again, this is where Kelly is phenomenal at what she does. And, and I wanted our listeners to start to comprehend if you're in the process of thinking about a divorce, mm -hmm. um, whether it be you're in your first year, you're in your 30th year, you need to make sure you talk to somebody. Um, that being the case, Kelly, how do people get a hold of you? What's the best way to get a hold of Kelly? Um, and, and how can people touch base with you to do a consult? Best way to get a hold of me is 518-218-9559. That puts you in touch with my paralegal who will do, a, we have to do a conflicts check. I have to make sure I haven't spoken to your spouse before and things like that. Yep. So I don't normally do that call because I want to make sure I don't have There's a, a layer, right? I, I have a conflict. So that puts you directly to my paralegal. She can book you for a consultation with me, go through what the consultation expectations are, the cost for the consultation, and everything from there. And what she also does is what I call somewhat triage, right? Mm -hmm. Because we've been talking about planning, but please, there are also the people who will call me and say, I got served with some papers. How long ago? Oh, two weeks ago. And the time to respond is 20 days, right? Right. So it, she also will go through the questions to know, do we need to get that person in a lot sooner yeah. than maybe the average person who's just thinking about divorce? Because there's actually something pending right now. Mm. And that person... You know, just kind of put it to the back the, burner. Put it to the back burner. So if you get so if you get papers, and again, this is where the process of this becomes very muddy because 
Every divorce is different. Do you, yeah. you get papers? Yeah. Did, does the person tell you? Do you get yeah. served? Did you, did yeah, you yeah, find yeah, it on yeah, Facebook? Yeah, 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 right? Yeah, did you yeah. find it on yeah. Facebook? I got divorced. Like, oh, it, it looks like it's I got complicated. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, the the key to success here is having usable knowledge, right, and, and functional knowledge, and that's where Kelly comes in. Um, thank you so much for being on the show. I, I know there's probably people watching saying, "Wait, ask this question," or "Wait, ask that question," right? You can always email your questions to irontreefinancial at ceterais.com. Mm -hmm. You can also find us at 43 British American Boulevard, Latham, New York, 12110. And you can always call us at 844-444-YTYM. Um, we again, thank you, Kelly, for coming in. Thanks, Kelly. Uh, thank you for shining some of that light on those wild situations. And, and there's probably more out there that we didn't even get to. And th again, the whole point of today is the tip of the iceberg. Sure. And, and to just say, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. So talk to somebody who does know. Let somebody, let somebody help you who does yeah. know. Uh, and again, it's your time. Your money.